So in this series, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be learning how to create our own web crawler. If you've been subscribed for a long time, you'll probably recognize that video already. I've already made a series on creating a web crawler, but I only got three videos in and the web crawler we created was uh, pretty terrible, to be honest. I'd rather go back and try to repair that web crawler and make it somewhat usable. We're just going to start from scratch and the old videos, as you can see here, uh, this is the first one. I'm probably just going to either delete or archive or something like that um, in place of the new ones. So the first thing to note about a web crawler is actually how it works. So what it does is you give it a website, so we give it a URL like uh, youtube.com and then what that web crawler will do, the first thing it will do is it will load youtube.com and it will um, find all the links on that page and then it will put those links in a list and it will go through that list one at a time. So before we go much further, it's probably worth checking out how a bot actually works. So the reason it says how bot in this box is because that's the name of our bot. Not just that's, that's not just what we are calling it, that's what the user agent of the bot is going to be. So if we go to uh, Wikipedia, you can see here it tells you what a user agent is, but essentially what it is, is it's what will show up in the logs of websites whenever our bot visits them. So if I scroll down, you can see this is the user agent for Google's bot. And our user agent is going to be HowBot. So this slide shows you the inputs and then what our bot will do to those inputs and then what it gets on the output. So uh, for example, the input for our bot is going to be this one website, which is actually the local website running on the computer here. This is it here. This is a test page that has uh, different sorts of links that the bot's going to have to learn how to understand and how to uh, work with because these are the sort of links that we'll find on the internet. And you can see on the right hand side, the output are the links that the bot is going to find on this particular web page. This web page on the input doesn't actually have these links, these are just made up links uh, just to show you how it works. So we get one link as an input and then we get an awful lot more than four links as an output in reality. The bot actually continues indefinitely until we tell it to stop. Um, but this just shows you we get one, we put one link in and we get multiple links out. We actually get more information about a web page other than just its URL. Because the whole point of crawling the website is to get its title, its description, its keywords and things like that. Things that we can store that uh, if we were to search them in a search engine we could display on our search page. So the output on the last page was just a high level uh, demonstration of how it actually works. But here we can see is the actual output that our bot is going to produce. You may or may not be able to tell but this is actually JSON. So the reason we're using JSON is because it's a really easy uh, format to store structured information that we can uh, actually map it to a PHP array so that whenever it comes time to actually insert our data into our database we can just treat this as a PHP array because there's a special function in PHP called JSON decode which will convert the uh, JSON string which is this whole uh, thing here to uh, an array in PHP that we can actually use and if you look here you can see the information that we're actually storing about each website is its title, its description, its keywords and its URL and you can see that these are in a JSON array. Uh, each item has four different uh, properties to it. And as you can see there's two websites here. Uh, there are two actual web pages. Every single web page will have these four uh, items stored about it. And each time the bot crawls a web page and gets its title, its description or its keywords it's going to append them to a big massive JSON string that we can then uh, do whatever we want with it. We can either keep it as a file or we can insert it into our database using a PHP script or whatever we want to do. So let's get started actually building our web crawler now that we know sort of the basics of how web crawlers work and we can see the sort of data that our web crawler is actually going to output. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a PHP block and I'm not going to close it off uh, and then I'm just going to create a variable called start and that's going to be equal to the website we want to crawl to begin with because the way our crawler works is we start at a website and then it follows all the links from those websites and eventually it just keeps going on and on and on forever until it runs out of links which doesn't actually happen. So the website we're going to start off with is this one running on my local computer and we're just going to paste its address in here. The reason we're using this as opposed to an actual live website on the internet is because if we go over to this page here, the reason for this as opposed to a live website is because we can actually test all the different types of links that our web crawler might encounter and have to be able to handle. So you can see the first link is a HTTPS link, so this is completely fine. The web crawler doesn't have to do anything, it just takes this link as it is and it can work with that fine. But the next one is one that causes problems because we haven't given it the full web address, we've only given it a page name. 
which will imply that this link is relative to the current page that we're on. So if we were crawling google.com and we came across a link that said test.php, our crawler needs to be able to know that the actual link that we wanted to crawl is https google.com forward slash test.php. The next link is one with two forward slashes as opposed to a URL scheme. These two forward slashes just mean that um, if the web page is currently using HTTP, then we want to append that onto this link. And if it's using HTTPS, we want to append that instead. So if I was on YouTube.com, YouTube uses HTTPS, so I would want the crawler to understand that and it would append HTTPS onto the link. The next one is um, a folder. and um, We want our crawler to just pretty much just append the name of the website uh, ahead of that so that that way we can actually access this page. So because this starts with a single forward slash that means that uh, this folder starts in the root of the domain. So if we were on google.com uh, forward slash test forward slash another and then just keep going it, we want the bot to append uh, just the root of the website which is google.com in this case. Next we need to be able to work out anchor links and these links are just links that redirect you to another part of the same page. So you could argue we don't actually need to, to uh, store them but we might want to store them um, for certain reasons that I'll come on to whenever we do the search engine uh, series. This next link we've already been over. This next link with a dot followed by the forward slash and then the name of the page is exactly the same as this one up here, test.php and we need to be able to understand this one too. And this one here is again the same as up here because it starts with a forward slash and this one here is one that's particularly uh, tricky it's a javascript link so it actually doesn't point to another web page it runs some javascript code on the web page we're already on but as i'm sure you're aware this won't be of any use to a web crawler so if we see a javascript link we want to just completely ignore it so that's all the time we have for this video we've got a lot of the groundwork out of the way we understand how the bot works now we understand what the bot's going to produce, what sort of output it's going to create for us, and we know what kind of links we're going to have to deal with whenever we're actually crawling the web. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.